So my name is Sunya Evans from McDonald. Uh, I'm a technical director and the global practice leader for storm and flood management. So what I'm going to talk about embracing innovation to be better prepared for flooding and specifically about a new approach uh, for coastal flooding and with some other tools of flood risk management. So during this talk, first I will look at a few historic events, uh, flooding events about the impacts and the how we can reduce the impact through innovation. Then we explain the coastal flood forecast tool we have developed for the environment agency for Lincoln Coast and also together with the research analysis tool and the visualization tool. I will finish the talk with some um, future applications and the benefit of the innovations. So now in this country, so what are the top two natural disasters? So anybody know here? Well done, I think you, you, you're doing your job very well. I see, apart from disease, flooding is actually ranked number one apart from uh, disease. So I think just look at, Anthony said we don't have cyclone hurricane in this country early on, I caught him there then. But I actually, in 17 and 03, and there was really destructive uh, cyclone, and the wind speed reached about nearly 200 kilometers per hour, and really killed 15,000 people. Now, even those most recent one in the living memory, like 1953, that again in Western Europe is killed about more than two and a half thousand people, including more than 300 in the UK. Let's look at what happened even just two years ago, December 2013. So that tidal surge event itself particularly affects the East Coast. Humber is the highest tide recorded since the record start. So for the last 60 years, that's caused enormous damage and widespread of flood. So now, so we saw those three examples, and once happened in 1703, then 1953, then 2013. But the bound to happen again, the question is when? But we need to prepare for that. And just on this slide, when I was preparing for that, I was just thinking, ah, it just struck me. All those big storm has a number of three. Now, when the next to be is anything to do with that another year of three? So now we already say that storm and really claim lives. And and storm also in fact affect so many things, particularly the core pillar of the society, core infrastructures. For example, it's flooded, can flood, which one treatment plant affect water supply, like we saw on the top slides on the on the right and affect the travel, the railway line, and also damage the road. And particularly on the bottom left, of everybody electricity like here, without electricity, you can't hear very well, you can't see things very well. I won't be able to show the slides. So that is Wallum substation in 2007, which is on the verge to be closed. Then military force, over 200 be called into the site. So with barrier built around the site and pump the water off site, keep it dry. That substation alone and supplies over 600,000 people. So, electricity really at the top of the chain of the infrastructures. If that's affected and all other things dependent on that, how could have a chain effect? For example, without electricity, hospital could be affected, and stock market would be affected. So are the other transport and the also treatment plant as well. Now, how about people's life? We saw people's home being flooded and elderly being evacuated from the house, a real line being wrecked, and also people's lives totally turned upside down. The question is, how to reduce the impact through innovation? So now I'm going to talk about the uh, innovation and we have developed for the environment agent for the Lincoln Coast, the coastal flood forecasting tool. So Lincoln Coast is on the east coast of England in the red circle area. And this coastline, it covers about 220 kilometers. What we have developed is a tool to enable the forecast to tell you a when and a where the flooding would happen. So the green dots on the screen shows there's no overtopping for the five days forecast. The yellow triangle shows the overtopping would occur. The, the red line indicating severe overtopping. Is that enough? You say there's overtopped. 
But most important people, for people to take action, you need to link with, are they going to be affected? So we actually, by linking the potential flooding extent, velocity, and hazard to the area could be affected. Now, is that enough? No. So we actually actually developed a reception analysis tool can quickly, by press the button, populate the address where the substation will be flooding or business at a risk or individuals' properties. So their postal address be listed, and therefore the individual would know if they are at risk, or emergency responder would know who go to contact. Now, early on during the discussion, we talked about a lot of people maybe not aware of the flooding, and particularly people moving you know, from one area to another area. So how to let people aware of that, raise the, raise the awareness? We developed three d visualization, basically to show the people before people flooded, you know, what could it look like due to flood defense being overtopped or, or bridge. So that's easy for everybody to understand that rather than just the map. And now the tool to be implemented on the national flood forecasting system uh, last year. This is my last slide. So what's the future application uh, for the innovation and what's the benefit? So the forecasting tool can be operated online as well as offline. So when you operate offline, you can test different scenarios, tide, surge, wind. So you can test it to plan it and unstressed condition. Now the live tool really can give you a really quick view about where it's going to be flooded, where it's going to be topped. So quickly, you know, overview. And it's really info important for the emergency responders that to make a decision where and to, to, do, to uh, allocate the resources and dispatch the resources. And the receptor analysis tool, and that one really valuable for emergency planning and emergency response. And the visualization really proven again, that's really powerful, effective tool for communicating flood risk. I think this combined together is the integrated tool case of the innovation to help to reduce the impact and damages can really help to save life and livelihood. So that's the end of my talk. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Sonia. Uh, one of the questions, one of the issues we talked about earlier in the flood uh, debate was that um, naturally these kind of tools are conservative because you as a uh, designer, you don't want to uh, underestimate. You don't want to get it wrong. That naturally, uh, I suppose, leaves to the situation where quite often you will predict something that doesn't happen. As soon as that happens, you lose confidence. I mean, how do you get around that, that problem of, of maintaining confidence while also maintaining conservatism that uh, doesn't drop you in it as a, as a consultant? I think that's a very good question because I think if you, it's a false alarm and if once, twice, three times and public would have lost confidence about you. And the, the beauty for this one, because you can put a different threshold values on that one, different users, you can put different threshold value. It's not like we fix the warning as such. You said this warning, this threshold, you can change it, use the real data. So therefore give you flexibility. It's not fixed just once. And the second thing, you mentioned electricity supply being at the top of the priority list, you know, um, for the public, at the top of their priority list is, is their house. Um, how does a system like this get around that kind of like changing uh, priority? About the house, in terms of, I think, again, back to resilience, you need the information to prepare themselves whether they're in the flash zone, if it happened, what it could be look like. So they can be informed, make sure the electricity compliance Anything else will be up to the level and how to prepare before it happens. And then if that does happen, for example, how can I help them to recover quicker? So you can't defend forever. It's prepare and get the recovery quicker.